you'll find me, amen, in the book of Mark chapter 1, Mark chapter 1, verses 21 and 22. Mark chapter 1, verses 21, 22. If you have your Bible with you. The sermon today is simply amazing. Can you say that with me? Simply amazing. Mark chapter 1, verse 21 and 22 reads like this. And they went into Capernaum and straightway on a Sabbath day. He entered into the synagogue and taught. And verse 22, which is our key verse, says, And they were astonished, amazed, bewildered, undone at his doctrine. For he taught them as one that had authority and not as the scribes. May God add a blessing to his red word. Let us hold our Bibles in hand. I can have what the word says. I can have. That's not everybody. I need everybody. I can have what the word says. I can have. And I can do what the word says. I can do. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. And amen. Let's give God the praise as you take your seat. Hallelujah. Let us pray. Dear Lord, Heavenly Father, as I bow my head before you today, I thank you for this great opportunity to speak to such a great people. I realize, God, that without you, I am and can do nothing. But Father, you know I realize that it's so necessary to get the word out because we live in a world where people are dying of sin. So we ask you in the name of Jesus that you let this word be help and healing to somebody. Encourage somebody's heart. Let somebody know that you're the greatest teacher that ever was and ever will be. And if anything happens good today, we know it's totally because of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ's love and grace and mercy. So Father, we thank you for already what you're about to do. But now we ask you to heal, deliver, and set someone free. In the name of the Father and the Son, in the Holy Spirit, in Jesus' name, we all pray, amen, 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 amen. and amen. amen. Let us welcome our Facebook family. Let's give God a hand clap. Welcome them into our service today. The sermon today is simply amazing. Can you say that? Simply amazing. In the book of Mark, it's a fast-moving book. It tends to focus on the main thrust of Jesus' ministry as a servant. A servant is one who goes about and does his task daily, job by job. And Jesus takes care of all the work that the Father sent him to do. Jesus totally focused on the mission from the Father in heaven. He's here in Capernaum today, and we see him as our Savior preaching. People are amazed on this particular Sabbath day and astonished by the word and the works of Jesus. My first point is the contents and the context of his preaching. And this day we know that the local synagogues was uh, like our local churches that we have today. Every community of Jews had, uh, if they had 10 families, they were required to have a rabbinical priests, and also required to have a synagogue. Now, during the Babylonian captivity in 586 B.C., they couldn't go out to the temple to worship, or they had to come together in synagogues in 586 B.C., and this is where they would come to worship and read the law and teach the law and worship God. Now, the synagogue quickly became uh, a center, a meeting place of the Jews, that attended the Saturdays, the Mondays, and the Thursday services. Now, I was also 
uh, understood that it would also be used for the school for the children. It was also the courtroom too. They read the law and the rabbinical scribes would preach. Now these sermons were meant to be uh, legalistic and long and dry and dusty. And they would read the word and then sit down and they would quote this good brother and by this good brother and by this good brother. And this word after this good brother and that good brother's opinion would bore the people out in the service. Never any fire, amen. We got some services like that today. Never no fire, never no shouting, never no praising, never no clapping the hands. It was just a regular old dry, somebody say dry, dry church service. They spent the whole day that was meant for praise and worship to God. And turned into a, a legalistic day of heavy burdens and bondages that they couldn't even be able to take themselves. Amen. They led the synagogue in this dark time with so much negativity and beating people down that the joy wasn't even in the synagogue. And it was under this situation that we see our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ walk in the dark. It was no spiritual light, no truth in the service. This was an atmosphere that the Lord Jesus Christ stepped in and somebody said, he's changing the atmosphere. He's changing the atmosphere. What they expected to be just a little old dry, dusty sermon about this good brother and that good brother turned into a powerhouse message that shook the rafters of everything in the church and saints let me tell you something it was a day like no other they never seen it before they never heard it before and the people knew that this man preached like somebody that knew what he was talking about somebody say amen, amen. amen. and they were astonished and dumbfounded they couldn't even believe what they were hearing being preached by this man and the jaws hit the ground. Now to worship on Sunday, listen, we worship on Sunday because we worship a risen Savior. I just need to make that clear. Luke chapter 4 verse 16 said that Jesus was accustomed to going into this dead synagogue everywhere that he went. You know, it amazes me that we come to church, and let me tell you something, even sometimes when it may just be teaching, Amen. You got to realize something that the change comes when we walk in the door. Somebody say amen. Because you got to make up your mind that when you come in the door, that I'm going to give God the glory. Somebody say amen. amen. Now, we people know who, who listen, who should be uh, at church right now. And they're missing. They're missing the message that can set them free. The word says in Hebrews chapter 10, verse 25. Do not forsake thyself, the assembly together, as the matter of some of you already are. We're supposed to be exhorting one another, and so much as we see the day approaching. People say, I'm not going to church uh, with those hypocrites. Well, some people say, well, you know, you might say I'm not going to church to be with them hypocrites, but I'd rather be in the church with a few hypocrites than to be in hell with all the hypocrites. Somebody say amen. amen. Stop giving God excuses and get back in your seat. Listen, God got a blessing with your name on it, but you can't get it if you're not here. Somebody say he is Simply amazing. Let me give you some reasons why we ought to go to a church on fire. Number one, because we love the Lord. And we want to pray and worship him with our family and with the saints. Y'all done messed some of y'all up. You want to sit at home. You don't want to come down the Island Avenue. Amen. But I'm here to tell you, we're right here on Island Avenue, and God's got a word in the Liberty Room right here on Island Avenue, 4609, for you. We should go because we're giving our testimony to family and our neighbors, and the testimony is that we love the Lord and that you ought to be going with us. Somebody say amen. 
Here's the next reason. You should go because sex is the right thing to do. Yeah. Somebody say amen. Yeah. You know, we need a whole lot of prepping and pushing. But the number one reason why I'm here today, because it's the right thing to do, and it honors my Lord, and I should be right here. It should be no debates whether I should go, shouldn't go. Listen, he didn't do it on the cross, so why are you doing it after the cross? Somebody say amen. The Bible said when he was going for you, he didn't say a moment work. He stepped up to the plate, did what he wanted. Listen, what the Father sent him to do, and we're here, receive the glory, and we need to give God the praise right now. Somebody give my hand. And I want you to know that Satan is all in it when you don't go to church. I know you don't like it, but I'm going to tell you anyway. Satan is all in it when you don't go to church. It's an absence from the church. Let me say this. An absence from the church is a vote to close the church. Did you hear me, Bishop? Amen. Your absence from the church is a vote to close the church. Are you listening to me? And if you love the Lord, you ought to be here. Clap your hands and give God the glory. Amen. Psalm chapter 94 and verse 16 said, Who will rise up for me against the evildoers? It's going to be me, Lord. Or who will stand up for me against the workers of iniquity? That's the reason why I'm here. Because where have all the soldiers gone? Where have all the missionaries gone? Where have all the members gone? Let me tell you something. God needs you, and you need God, and you ought to be here. Fight for the cause of Jesus Christ. Let me tell you something. Being lazy ain't going to get it. Excuses ain't going to get it. All these reasons why you shouldn't be here, it's not going to get it. There's one reason why you need to be here, because Jesus is waiting for you. Give God a hand clap. Yes. The character of his preaching. We are told that Jesus spake with authority. He spake like a man that knew what he was talking about. Now the scribes can only quote this good brother, that good brother, but Jesus, with the power of understanding, the scribes majored on minor things, but Jesus majored on major things. Somebody say amen. amen. Can you see him sitting up trying to figure out uh, uh, if you're tired or not uh, giving enough mint leaves? From Matthew 23, 23. They worried about how far a man can walk on the Sabbath. Who cares how far a man can walk on the Sabbath? I walk as far as I got to. If I got to take care of my family, somebody say amen. amen. But Jesus spoke on weighty matters like life and death and heaven and hell. Oh my God, somebody say amen. Eternity. He preached on eternal values. The scribes with rabbinical would quote this good brother and that good brother. Stuff that didn't wasn't even important. Amen. How many times have I sat up under people sitting up talking about stuff that don't mean nothing. Amen. But I'm here today to tell you that we're going to talk about heaven. We're going to talk about hell. We're going to talk about eternity. We're going to talk about glory. We're going to talk about Jesus. And if you want to hear, clap your hands and give God the glory. In Mark chapter 12, verse 40, it said, Jesus spoke as a lover of men. All the scribes did was use people, listen, that they were supposed to love, and all they cared about is what they could get from them. When Jesus spoke, he used the word of God. As he shaped, listen, as a two-edged sword, he shaped the hearts of those that were listening, and he pierced the hearts that made them realize that they needed Jesus more than anything else. And lives were eternally changed and altered. That's the way it should be right here in the church today. It should be with the truth, the power, and the point to preach about the things 
that are important to break people from those false chains, from those lies, and from those broken promises. It's still a time that we need to live holy and die holy. Can I get a witness? Somebody say amen. I ain't got time to sit up and listen to you talk about why well, women should wear, uh, shouldn't wear open-toed shoes. Amen. Amen. Why are people sitting up wearing wire rim glasses? Amen. It's not biblical preaching. Amen. Somebody say amen. amen. In 2 Timothy chapter 2, chapter 4, verse 2, it says, We have a mandate to preach the word in season, out of season. Hallelujah. And I want you to realize something that anytime somebody grabs the sacred desk and don't preach and start preaching something other than the word, listen, if you go beyond the word, you go beyond God. Amen. And when we open up our new church, it'll have a sign on the pulpit just like the other churches. Preach Jesus and Jesus only. Preach Jesus and Jesus only. Ain't nobody worried about whether you got earrings. This ain't nobody talking about that. Amen. We're talking about heaven and hell. Oh, Amen. Amen. Somebody clap your hands and give God a word. And then I want to talk about the content of this preaching. Such we don't know the exact words that he spoke that day, but we know from Luke chapter 4, verse 16 to 21. Of what, listen, what he came to preach. And he came to preach, number one, to the poor. To the poor. Somebody say poor. poor. Let me tell you something. He came to preach a word to the poor. Those who were destitute of wealth, position, influence, honor. Those who were lonely and needy, lacking, helpless. He's talking to those who don't even know the man. Good God in hell. But he came to tell somebody who was bound, doing bad, going through. It amazes me how we try to preach to the masses and all we talk about is prosperity and every last one of us was born broke. <laughs> <laughs> Trying to prove something to people that was born and didn't have nothing in the beginning. The best thing that ever happened to every one of you was Jesus Christ. Clap your hands if you hear the words that are coming out of my mouth. He came to preach the good news of hope to the hopeless. Oh my God. The help, the helpless. Life to the lifeless. He came to tell them that there was love, hope, salvation was available to them right now. That's the good news. Somebody say, that's mighty good news. And if you're there today, it's a man by the name of Jesus that will take you like you are. Listen, he'll touch you. He'll save you, save your soul. He'll change you and turn your life around. And you'll be able to say, he's amazing. Somebody say hallelujah. hallelujah. Then Luke said he came to heal the brokenhearted. That means those who are broken into pieces and trampled and crushed underfoot. Those unsisted, those that were under Satan's attack. But Jesus came to get them off their back. Hallelujah. And put them in love under new management. Somebody say amen. amen. Somebody say, oh, what a change in my life. Oh, what a change. Hallelujah. Oh, what a change. Oh, what a change in my life. When Jesus came in, the devil had to get out. Somebody say amen. amen. Then the word said, the word said in Luke chapter 4, verse 16, and I'm sorry, Luke 4, 16, 21, said that he came to preach deliverance to the captives. Good God. Amen. Captives mean those who were held by spear point on their neck. Just one thrust of the enemy. They could have been dead. Saints, life without Jesus is a life wasted. Amen. Let me say that. A life without Jesus is a life that's been wasted. Amen. And in hell, there's no relief. Yes. Nothing but pain. 
but Jesus said that he will deliver you. That means, listen, release you from the bondage and prisonness. Listen, give forgiveness. He can pardon you. Listen, he can let your sins go like they never even happened. Somebody say, that's amazing. Because I don't know about you, but I was a sinner man. I was born in sin, shaped in iniquity. But Jesus came in my life and changed everything. And today I'm sitting here like it never even happened. Somebody say that. Then Luke said he came to heal the broken heart. That means those who were broken into pieces, trampled down, crushed underfoot. Those under Satan's foot, Jesus came to get that right up off their neck. Get them off of me, man. That's a lot of people's condition today. Some think that they can do good deeds and turn over a good leaf. <laughs> turn over a new leaf. Listen, get a little religion and everything is okay. But that's a lie. That's a lie. Because a little religion ain't going to change things. But Jesus can change everything. Somebody say yes, Lord. When Jesus came, a person's heart he was convicted and that carried Lord have mercy. And the Holy Spirit would come in when he got convicted. And the Holy Spirit would show them just how lost they really are. Let me tell you something. Nobody can convict nobody of sin but Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. And the Holy Spirit when the Spirit come in your life, it'll change everything. Make you see just how wrong you are, how evil you are, how mean you are, how nasty you are. And realize that there's nothing good under the sun unless it's Jesus in my life turning things around. Helping me to focus on what is good and acceptable in his sight. Then when they act on the information received from Jesus. <laughs> His grace is merely, listen, his mercy and his love. And saints, we are talking amazing. Let me tell you something. We get a whole new lease on life. Look at somebody say, I'm not who I used to be. Hallelujah. Give God the praise. We did it happen at the cross, at the cross where I first saw the light and the birth of my soul rolled away. It was there by faith. Good God Almighty, I saw the light and now I'm happy all day. Oh, somebody come on, somebody. The door of hope was open. It's still open today. He invites those who are broken, bruised, battered by sin to come to Jesus. The man who preached like he knew what he was talking about, he's still amazing after 2,000 years later. It's still working for us all. Somebody say, his amazing love. When I think about his amazing love, i got to go to Peter. And Peter in Luke chapter 22, verse 33, he said, I'm ready to go with you to prison and to death. Peter was bold. Yes. Peter was big. Yes. Peter was proud. But we see that bold Peter, proud, boastful, know everything, do anything. I'll go with you. Nobody better not touch you. But after the cock crowed three times, come on, somebody. Oh, somebody getting it. After the cock crowed three times, listen, that was fake Peter over there in Luke. But we see the real Peter. In John chapter 2, verse 15 and 19, where after Peter that went out, listen, jumped over out the boat, butt naked in the water. Digging loves it. I learned something about people. When they're proud and they're boastful, they can talk big, but can you walk the walk and talk the talk? Are you living the life that you preach? Are you walking? Listen, this is the reason why we have so many ministries with so much trouble because people are not walking what they're talking. Amen. And Peter ain't no different. We see Peter over in uh, John 21, verse 15 and 19. Thank you, Mike. 
So when they had the, when they had died, Jesus said to Peter, Simon, son of Jonah, loveth thou me more than these? I can see Peter now. Why he's saying that to me? Maybe Peter, because you was out there in the water, but naked. Maybe because you went back to what you used to do before you knew me. Maybe because you had so much mouth over there in Luke about how you was going to follow me, how you was going to stand by me. Had the nerve to stand up there and cut Malchus' ear off. Had to reach down, put it back on. I'll be with you. I'm with you. Then he asked him again. He said, the second time, Simon, son of Jonah, love and thou me. He said, yeah, Lord. Come on now, you know that I love you. He said unto him, feed my sheep. The third time he said, Simon, son of Jonah, love of me. And the Bible said Peter was read because he said unto him the third time, love of thou me. And he said, Lord, he said unto him, Lord, thou know of all things, and you know that I love you. And Jesus said unto him, feed my sheep. See, what he's trying to show you today is that Peter didn't have the same kind of love for Jesus. It's the love that Jesus had for him. Can I get a witness? See, Jesus had agape love, unconditional love, but all Peter had was brotherly love. But he said, Peter, I want you to know that verily, verily, I say unto thee, when thou was young and gritted thyself and walked where thou would go, he said, but when you going to get old, thou shalt stretch forth thy hand and another shall grit thee and carry thee, whether thou would have not. Saints, he said, Peter, let me tell you something. You may not love like I love. But let me tell you something. Some of you sitting right here. You don't love them like you should love them. You don't love them as much as you say you love them. But let me tell you something. Because we all mess up with God sometimes. But he said, you know what, Peter? If that's all you got is Philem. If that's all you got is brotherly love. He said, let me tell you something. I'll take it. Hallelujah. I'm here to tell you anything. Then whatever you got, whatever love, wherever you are, Jesus said, I'll take it. And when I get finished with you, he said, let me tell you, the day will come where they're going to take you. And Peter, you're going to be crucified just like me. But you're going to be upside down. You're going to find it in your heart that you don't even want to be crucified right side up. He said, you don't understand it all right now. He said, but you stick with me, son. I'll take what little you got. And I'll take that little. And I'll wrap my love around it. I'll wrap my grace around it. I'll wrap my mercy around it. He said, when it's all over, you'll be glad to go to the cross just like me. Somebody clap down and say amen. Somebody out there on Facebook, you may say, Pastor, but I'm not where I need to be. Listen, Jesus will take that. All I'm trying to tell you today to give them enough and give them something to work with. Somebody say that. Give them something to work with. When you give them something to work with, listen, he's going to work with it. Somebody say, that's amazing love. Let me tell you, Listen, he's still the first and the last. He's still the beginning and the end. He's still the creeper and keeper of all created things. He's still the architect of the universe and the manager of all times. He still always was, always is, and will always be. He's unmovable, unchangeable, undefeatable, but he's never been undone. Oh my God, he was brutal. For your healing, he was pierced. Hallelujah! For your love, he was persecuted and brought to freedom. He was dead, so you can have life. He was risen to bring power. He raised to bring peace. Listen, him and he was listen. He, oh my God, he listen. The world still can't understand him. The armies can't defeat him. The schools can't explain him. The leaders. Can't ignore them. Herod couldn't kill him. The Pharisees couldn't confuse him. And the grave couldn't hold him. Nero couldn't crush him. The elders of the church and other religions can't replace him. And the world can't explain him. He is the life. He's love. Love Jesus. He's Lord. He is goodness and care and kindness and greatness and 
to our Facebook family. But before we go offline, I want to 